Hey guys, welcome to another Python tutorial for beginners. In today's video, we'll be creating a simple program that allows us to view, add, modify, and delete elements using only the dictionary data type. So the purpose of this program is for us to get more comfortable with working with the dictionary data type. So without further ado, let's get into this. So let's talk about this program that we'll be building today. I'm going to name it as Individual Control Center. So this program will ask for some user input. And once you are prompted with some questions, you can select the options from View, Insert, Update, or Delete to either add, change, or delete any individual information. And once you have selected an option, it will ask some more questions so that we can collect the information about the individual coming into our program. And then once we have all the information, we'll perform some dictionary operations based on what we have learned in our last video. So for the purpose of this program, dictionary will work as our data storage to store multiple individuals. So if you need a recap on dictionary, please click the top right corner. And before we actually start getting into writing this program, I want to let you know that there are obviously better ways to build a program like this using the list, for loops and while loops, but since we haven't talked about the loops just yet, let's try to build this using only the dictionary data type and once we build it, let's talk about how we can improve this at a later stage using some other programming fundamentals. Okay, so now let's create our first function here. So the first function will be responsible for getting the user input uh, with these options that we have here. So we can say that user prompt and create a variable user input input function and in here let's put some instruction message so welcome to the individual control center and then line break here please select an option from another line break and then let's just copy and paste the options that we have here here and then at the end of the function we want to return the user input like that and since I want to get the integer value from the end users I want to wrap this function input with another function int so that I can actually translate the string to integer okay so now we have our first function here let's also create our main function so I'm gonna say that individual control center and then the first action that the individual control center will perform is to get the user input so I'm gonna call this function user input equal to this function and now let's also try to create our main dictionary which will serve as a storage to store all the individual coming into our program so i'm going to create a global variable here so individual database and then set that equal to a dictionary so we have our base structure implemented here. Let's try to implement our first option, which is view. So view will be nothing more than just printing out all the elements in this individual database dictionary. So I'm going to create some conditional statements here. So if user input equal equal one, because we are getting the integer value based on the option that they are selecting from in this function. And so if this is the case, then we just want to print individual database. And also, let's try to be slightly more helpful by printing out how many elements that we have in the individual database. In other words, how many individuals that we have in this dictionary. So we can just say print, currently there are, and then string formatting here, individuals in individual database. And let me apply some line break. And then I can use the format method, format, and then we can do land individual database so let's test this function by calling the individual control center so in the bottom i'm just going to call this function center and then parenthesis if i run it then you will see a prompt which we have implemented in uh, this function and it's going to show all the options so now we only implemented the number one which is the view i'm just going to type one here then it's going to show the pre-message saying that currently there are zero individual in individual database and it's going to show the empty dictionary which is the expected behavior because we haven't inserted any individuals into the individual database just yet but we see a slight problem here right so the problem here is that right after we provide our input and press enter the program was just terminated as you see here and that means that the individual database that we created at the top was reset which is not the behavior that we want we want this individual database to persist and in order for us to make that happen we shouldn't terminate our program like this so we can easily persist our program using while loop but since we haven't talked about the loops just yet let me use another way to persist this program and this technique is called recursion which I'm gonna talk more about in later videos but what we're gonna do here is that we'll be calling this individual control center 
once again at the end of this if statement below the print statement. So what this will do is that right after this print statement, Python would normally just terminate the program because you don't have anything else at the bottom. But now since we are calling this individual control center function, once again, it's going to show the user prompt right after this print statement. So let's try to run this program one more time. So run it and then you will see the same prompt here. So one and you will see a print message with an empty dictionary. And in the bottom, you see another set of prompt, which is expected because we call this function once again so this user prompt function was triggered and this is the behavior that we wanted so now since the program was not terminated we can assume that the individual database was not reset because the program that instantiated this individual database is still running Okay, so now let's move on to the next option here, which is insert. So let's try to write some code that allows us to insert an individual into this individual database that we have at the top. So the idea here is that we'll be getting first, last, and nicknames from the user prompt. And we will use the first name as a key for the individual database and store another dictionary with all other information as a value. So the first step here is for me to actually create the else if statement. So let me just say else if user input equal equal to meaning it's an insert, then I want to get the user prompt for the first, last, and nickname. But to save some time, let me just copy and paste the code here. So in here, we are getting the user input for the first, last, and nickname. And let's write an insert statement so that we can insert this new individual into the individual database. So I can do individual database, square bracket, and use the first name as a key, as mentioned name and set that equal to line break another dictionary which is going to contain all the user information so i can say first name again and then user input first name comma uh, last name and then user input last name comma and then nickname and user input nickname here okay so now we have our insert statement let's also write a print statement so i can do print a new individual was inserted into the individual data Base. Okay, and let's not forget to call this individual control center once again at the end of the print statement. So just paste it here. And then if I run this one more time and just start with a view, so I can do view here and then you will see an empty dictionary which is expected. And in here I can insert. So it's going to ask the first name. So I can say Mitchell and last name is Hill and then the nickname is Mitch. Okay, so if I click the one again, now you will see one individual with all the individual information and using the individual first name as the key for the individual database. So the key here is the first name and then the value is another dictionary that contains all information including the first name as well. So now let's try to add another individual here. So I'm gonna say two and the first name is Patrick and then the last name is James and then the nickname is Pat. And if I type one again, now then you will see two individuals as you see here. Currently there are two individuals in the individual database. And so the first one has a key of Mitchell and value of this. And then the second individual has a key of Patrick and then the value of this or other information about Patrick. Okay, so now let's try to implement our next option, which is update. So the first thing that we're going to do is obviously we're going to write another else if statement to check whether the option is three, which is an update. And then the first question that I'm going to ask the user is to provide the first name. And the reason why we need the first name is because we have saved each individual into individual database using their first name as the key. So before we actually allow the users to update anything, we have to first check whether that individual exists in the individual database or not. Okay, so I'm going to write an else if statement here. So error if user input equal equal three, meaning it's an update, then we want to check. But before we check, we have to first ask the first name. So copy and paste this here. And then if user input first name exists in individual database, then I'm going to say print individual exists. Otherwise, I'm going to say print individual does not exist. So as you notice here, I'm using the membership operator in to check whether the key, which is the first name, exists in the individual database. If it does exist, then I'm going to print out the individual exists. Otherwise, I'm going to print out individual does not exist. And in this if statement, only when the individual actually exists in the individual database, we're going to actually perform the update operation. So let me write some steps here. So the first step here, number one, is to get the target key and value from end user. And then second is we try the value of individual, which is another dictionary, uh, using the first name as the key. And then the last step here is that use target key and value 
to perform update. So let me start from step one here. So get the target key and value. So we can do target key and input, enter the key, okay, and some space, and same thing, target value, input, enter the value, and some space here as well. Okay, so now we have a number one here. Let's go into number two, which is the retrieve the value of individual using the first name as a key. So what we can do here is that we can create a new variable called target person, and then we can do individual database, and then square bracket and use the first name as a key. So use your input first name. So what we are doing here is that we are actually retrieving the value of that individual from the individual database using the individual first name as a key. So this target person is now the dictionary that holds all the individual information, first, last, and nickname. So from here, we're gonna perform the update since we now have the target person. So we can do a target person square bracket and put the target key. So which field that they want to update among first, last, and nickname, and then set that equal to the desired value which is the target value that end user gave us like that okay so now we have a step one two and three let's uh, put this individual control center here and then let's test it out so if I run this then you see a prompt here so let's add some new individual because we are now rerunning the program so we can do this and then Mitchell Hill and Mitch okay and then if you view you will see uh, one individual with a Mitchell and then let's add another individual so I can say uh, Christopher, and then John's, oops, and then Chris. So one again, now you have a two individual. So now let's go into the update here. So perform three, then it's gonna ask the first name. So I'm gonna say Mitchell, and the individual exists printed out. And now we have to enter the key among first name, last name, and nickname. So in this case, I wanna change the nickname here. So I can do Nick name, and then enter the value. I'm gonna say new Nick name okay and then if i view one more time then you will see that the mitchell first name mitchell last name hill and then in the nickname session you will see an updated value here so then now let's try to update the first name uh, of the second individual chris and let's see what happens so i'm gonna say update one more time and enter the first name so christopher and enter the key i want to edit the first name and the value is christopher2 and if I look at the view and go to that individual, which is right here. So you will see a Christopher here as a key for our individual database. And in the nested dictionary that we have, you see a Christopher 2 as a first name. So now, obviously, we have a problem because we have two different first names. The Christopher as a key for the individual database and Christopher 2 as the value of the key first name in the nested dictionary. And in order for us to fix this, we need to implement a new condition that checks if the target key is the first name, then instead of updating this value, only we're gonna have to replace this entire element starting from the Christopher to this value and the reason why we need to do it is because in order for you to actually update the key in Python you need to actually update the entire element and that is the only way to update the key in Python so let me write another nested if statement here so if target key is first name then we want to remove that element from the individual database so we're gonna say individual database.pop which we have learned in our last video and then I'm gonna put the first name so user input first name okay now we have to reinsert the new element with a new key and value into the individual database so what we're gonna do is individual database square bracket and then in here we're gonna put the target value and set that equal to target person that we have set above here. So let's go over this code here. So we are using the first name as a key for the individual database. And as I explained, the only way for us to update the key is to delete the element and reinsert it into the individual database. So in this if statement, we are checking whether the end user wants to update the first name. So in that case, rather than performing a normal update operation like this above, we want to actually delete that element from the individual database using the pop method and providing the first name, which is the key as the argument and then we want to reinsert this individual with the updated first name which is the target value and set that equal to the nested dictionary that we have created above here which is the target person that contains all the information about the individual so now let's try to run this one more time but before that let me just cut this and paste it at the end of the else statement here outside of the else like 
right here. So if we run it one more time, then we're gonna have to reinsert the individual because the program was refreshed. So kill and then image and then another individual. So Christopher and Jones and Chris. And so if we view it now, we have two individuals with uh, Mitchell and Christopher here. So let's now update. So the first name is Christopher. So I want to edit the Christopher's value. And then the key that I want to edit is the first name. So first name and then value is Christopher2. And if I view it one more time and just scroll to the right, then now you will see a two exactly same first name. First one as a key for the individual database and second one as a value for the nested dictionary with the key of the first name. Okay, so now let's implement a delete here. This should be pretty simple. So else if user input equal equal full, meaning it's delete, then I'm gonna copy and paste the logic that checks whether the first name, the key, exists in the individual database. If it does not exist, then I'm gonna copy and paste this uh, print statement. But if it does exist, then you know we already implemented the delete statement here. So just copy and paste and then paste it right here. And let's not forget to put this individual control center here at the very end like that. So let's try to run it and test it out. So let me just insert one individual. So Mitchell, Hill, and Mitch. And then if I look at the view, there's one individual. So I'm gonna perform the deletion. So full, and then first name is Mitchell. And if I look at the view one more time, then you see an empty dictionary saying that currently there are zero individual in the individual database. So the deletion was successful. And let's now move on to the last option, which is a quit. So I'm gonna say else if user input equal equal five, meaning it's quit, then I'm just gonna write a print statement here. The program was terminated. And in the else block, I'm gonna say print statement, uh, the input that you provided is not valid because it's not in one to five. So if I run this just one more time and just insert one individual. Okay, so view, there's one individual. And then if I just type a uh, quit here, which is five, then you will see that the program was terminated. So let's try this one more time to uh, check this error statement. So if I put like six here, then it's gonna say that the input that you provided is not valid. So now we have everything implemented in this program from number one to number five. And if you put some invalid input like number six, then it's gonna print this message out, letting the user know that the only valid options are from number one to number five. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, this program has some room for improvement as well as some limitations. So let's quickly walk through them one by one. So the first issue is that since we are using the first name as a key, Python will not allow you to insert duplicate keys, which is the first name into the dictionary. So this is a pretty big limitation because there can be many individuals with the identical first name. And also, since we are using the first name as a key, updating the first name requires us to delete the element from the dictionary rather than just performing the normal update. And the second issue is the base data structure. So for the purpose of this program, we've made the individual database to be dictionary, but if we can use the list for individual database, we could store and manage multiple individuals more easily following the format that I'm showing you in the comment here. As you can see, each element in the list represents each individual, and there is no key that you need to handle. So it's a lot easier for us to perform the operations that we've talked about today. But in order for us to locate a specific individual, this would require us to loop through all the elements in the list, and since we have haven't talked about the loops just yet. We've just used the dictionary for our individual database. So once we learn about the loops in the next couple of videos, we'll try to come back to this and improve this code. And the next one, this is just for the feature and general practice. When you want to build a program that needs to hold the persisting data like our individual database, it's not a good idea for us to store the data within the variable like this, especially when you want to persist it for a long time or the amount of data that you are storing into this variable is big. This is where either the database or a caching system can be useful to properly store and interact with the data from your program. And once we are done with this Python tutorial videos, we will slowly progress toward the full stack web development where you can learn more about the database and caching system. And last but not least, we could replace all the recursions that we have in our program with a single while loop. And as I mentioned, once we talked about the loops, we'll come back to this. Okay guys, that's it for this video. I hope that you are able to understand better about working with the dictionary data type. In our next video, we'll talk about some of the dictionary methods and we will also get into loops in the next couple of videos. So please stay tuned. And if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you in the next videos.